in today's lesson, we are going to look at the topic bearings. We are just going to have a little revision on the topic bearings. What is bearings? Bearing is a measurement of direction using angles. In other words, you can say that bearings is the angular distance between two or more points within a plane. The angular distance between two or more points within a plane. This is done with the help of the cardinal point. And we know the cardinal points to be the north, south, east, and west. There are two ways of measuring the bearing of a point from another point. We can use the north pole and measuring in the clockwise direction, then we get the bearing. You can equally also use the north or south pole only and the bearing eastward or westward. So without wasting my time, as we said early on, we are actually going to look at some of the examinable questions on bearing. And as you know, we're still going to use the WASI work examples for this session. So we have some objective type questions here, which came in NOVDEC 2010, as well as June 2011. So to begin with, the first question is the bearing of the point P from Q is 306 degrees. Find the bearing of Q from P. So in order to find the bearing of Q from P, we need to make a small sketch of the bearing of P from Q. So we just draw our cardinal point. And with this cardinal point, it should depict the point Q. And the point Q is 306 degrees. So when we measure 306 degrees from the North Pole in the clockwise direction, it will find itself within the second quadrant. So it goes through the clockwise direction. So 90, another 90, giving us 180 plus another 90, 270. So 306 degrees may find itself within this quadrant. And hence, we can introduce a terminal line leading us to the point P. So we can write the point P over there. And then now we draw the angle, the direction of that, that is 306 degrees. But remember the question says, find the bearing of Q from P. Hence, at the point P, we can also make a sketch of the cardinal point. So we draw a north to south pole line and then east to west pole line as well. Therefore, you know that the cardinal points are parallel to each other. So any terminal line that links one point to the other gives you um, the line as a transversal line. So what is the remaining angle from the 270 degrees line to meet the terminal line that leads us to the point Q? And um, how do we get that? We subtract 270 from 306. So 306 minus 270 that will give us a remaining angle and that gives us a value of 36 degrees so we have 36 degrees here and this 36 degrees as we know will be alternate angle to the angle at the point p which is 36 degrees. So in order to get the bearing of Q from P, we need to read it all the way from the North Pole of P in the clockwise direction to meet the terminal line that leads us to the point Q. So when I join from the North Pole of P to the terminal line, then it means we are going to add 90 degrees to it. So 
we can see that the bearing the bearing of Q from P will be equal to 90 degrees plus 36 degrees and that will give us a total angle of 126 degrees which is possible answer C. In the same way going to the next question the bearing of E from F is 20 degrees and that of G from E is 140 degrees. If G is directly east of F, find angle F, G, E. Find angle F, G, E. So one way or the other, we have to make a simple sketch of the whole diagram. So we have to take our time and do the sketch. And the bearing of E from F is 20 degrees. So we can just introduce our cardinal point at the point F. So let's assume that we have the cardinal point at F. So we have the point F here. So having the point F here, now 20 degrees, which is the bearing of E from F, we may have the 20 degrees within the first quadrant, which will be here. So we have our 20 degrees shown there. So we have 20 degrees here. Ideally, it means if we have 20 degrees here, we can find the remaining angle here, which is actually going to be 70 degrees because the total angle between the 90, um, the North Pole and then the East Pole is giving us a total of 90 degrees. And this is the terminal line that leads us to the point E. Remember, this question doesn't have any distance attached to it, so we just need a bearing. So we have the point E here. Now, when you continue, it says that, and that of G from E is 140 degrees. So we still need to draw a cardinal point. So let's draw a vertical line to represent the north to south pole, and then east to west line should also be there. Then we locate a bearing of 140 degrees leading us to the point Q and sorry the point G. So 140 degrees from the North Pole of E will lie in the fourth quadrant. So we may have a line within the fourth quadrant heading towards G. So we have the point G probably somewhere here. You write G there. And um, the angle should be shown. So we have a total angle of actually 140 degrees. So it says G is directly east of F. So if I go further, G is directly east of F. So it means that um, the point, the Z location for G is on the east direction of F. So we need to extend the point F in the east pole so that it meets G. So at, this is where exactly we have the point G. So we can clean part of G and then have the exact location for G. So this is where we have the point G because it's directly at the east of F because that is the east line leading to G. And therefore, when you continue, it says that find angle FGE. Find angle FGE. So finding angle FGE, then there will be the need for us to locate the total angle at E. So we first need to locate angle FEG. Since we know 20 degrees is a bearing leading us to E, then it means that we can have. 20 degrees alternating with part of angle E. So we have 20 degrees here. And then, um, since we have 140 degrees also as a bearing leading to G, then it means we need to find the remaining angle that leads to the south pole of E. So that angle, we subtract uh, 140 degrees from 180 degrees because we have a straight line angle from the south to, from the north to south pole. And 140 out of 180 will give us a total angle of 
40 degrees. So the total angle at E within this triangle is 60 degrees. So in order to find angle FGE, FGE, which is here, angle FGE will be equal to 180 degrees minus the sum of the two other interior angles which are located. And that is going to be 60 degrees, which is the angle at FEG plus 70 degrees, which is the angle at EFG. So going further, 180 degrees minus 60 plus 70 degrees gives us a total angle of 130 degrees. So striking the difference, we are going to get 50 degrees as the angle FGE. So the value is 50 degrees. So let's move on to other work examples. Remember these are session A, but if you practice it the more, it becomes faster for you to understand it very well. Moving on to other examples, we have one which says that Boache is on a bearing of 0 to 7 degrees from Obeng and Sapon is on a bearing of 137 degrees from Boache. If Obin is at a point equidistant from the position of Boache and Sapon, what is the bearing of Obin from Sapon? Once again, this question is purely bearing. No distance is actually being shown. Just that at one point it says they are equidistant from one section. So a sketch will make it very easy in solving this question. So let's begin. Boache is on a bearing of 0 to 7 degrees from Obin. So it means we have Obin location. We need to locate Obin. So let's take it that Obin finds himself here. And then we measure an angle of 27 degrees from the North Pole. And that will lead us to... The direction which finds itself within the first quadrant. So we have our 27 degrees from the North Pole to 27 degrees here. Remember, as I said, the location here is for Obin. You can choose to use O to represent Obin, or you can put it as Obin straight ahead. Then, having the bearing of Obin, it leads us now to Boache. So we have the location of Boache. Boache is here. Now getting Boache's location, now it says that and Sapon is on a bearing of 137 degrees from Boache. So we are heading towards Boache's location, but we are standing at um, we are heading towards Sapon's location. We are heading towards Sapon's location, but we are Stepping on Obin's location to head towards Boache's, to head towards Sapon's location. So, in other words, um, Sapon is on a bearing of 137 degrees from Boache. So, we draw the cardinal point also at Boache's location. And then, having that, 137 degrees will find itself within the fourth quadrant. So let us draw our 137 degrees bearing. It finds itself in the fourth quadrant. Then we also write the bearing. From the North Pole of Boache, we have 137 degrees. That's a full angle there. So therefore, this line here leads us to Sapon. So Sapon finds himself on this terminal line. Now, when you go further, we are told that if Obin is at a point equidistant from the positions of Boache and Sapon, so it means that wherever Obin finds himself, the distance from him to Boache and the distance from him to Sapon, they are equal. Then it says that what is the bearing of Obin from Sapon? 
what is the bearing of or being from serpent? Now, the question is, how do we go or uh, how do we work it out? Now, in order to work it out, you can choose to draw a line from Obing all the way to meet Sapon. So let me use a rule to do that. Just draw a straight line to meet that. Now, I'm trying to estimate whatever I'm doing carefully because um, we are told that the distance from Obing to Boache is of equal length to that of Sapon. So, in other words, since I'm trying to draw it accurately, it means that if you check the length carefully, it means from Obing to Sapon, it's um, slightly equal to that of from Obing to Boache. So, instead of writing Sapon down here, I need to move Sapon um closer to that of Boache because the distances are the same so let me just clean this line here and then bring sapon very close so sapon will find himself here okay so now we can say that the length here is equal to the length there but the question demanded for the bearing um the bearing of or being from sapon so it means we have to draw the cardinal point at sapon draw the cardinal point at sapon this time around i'm going to have my north to south pole and then my east to west pole so if i want the bearing then it means i need to read it from the north pole of sapon all the way to meet the terminal line that leads me to or being but how do we find that now remember that i'm using a different color a yellow color for that matter the bearing of or being to boache is 27 so we can find the remaining angle here that is from the terminal line that leads to boache then to the east pole for or being so if that is 27 then to find the remaining angle is going to be 90 minus 27 and that will give us a value of 63 so we have the full angle which is in the yellow color as 63 degrees so we have let me use 63 degrees here therefore i need to find a smaller angle between the terminal line that connects Obing and Boache, and then Obing and Sapon. So in doing that, let us find the remaining angles at Boache's location. So finding the remaining angles at Boache's location, uh, using a different color for that, we know 27 degrees here will alternate with the one here. So we have 27 here. And then 137, also we can find with the 137 degrees we can find the remaining angle to the south pole of boache and that is going to be 180 degrees minus 137 degrees and that will give us an answer of 43 degrees so we have 43 degrees here so the total angle at Boache's point to Obing and Sapon will be 43 degrees plus the 27 degrees. And that gives us a value of 70 degrees. So we have 70 degrees at the angle at uh, Boache. So Boache's angle, total angle is 70 degrees. And since we know that the distance between Obing and then Sapon, Obing to Sapon and Obing to Boache, they are equal distance. Then if this section is 70 degrees, then we have something like, we have an isosceles triangle. So having an isosceles triangle, we can find 
So the whole of this is 70. Let me just write this somewhere. 70 degrees. This side gives you the full angle at Sapon. And then this side also gives it the angle towards Boache. So since they are of equal distance, so we have 70 here, then this end will also be 70 degrees. It will also give us 70 degrees. Therefore, we can find a smaller angle at Obin's location. The smaller angle at Obin's location is going to be 70 plus another 70 then out of 180 degrees and that gives us a value of 40 degrees so we have the smaller angle here as 40 degrees let me use an arrow to depict that so let me use a green marker to show the angle i'm talking about so this angle here is 40 degrees so then we need to find a smaller angle at this section getting that smaller angle then we can subtract the 40 degrees from the 63 degrees so we have it as 63 degrees minus 40 degrees that gives us an answer of 23 degrees so we have 23 degrees there this 23 degrees this 23 degrees actually will alternate with the smaller angle here the 23 degrees will alternate with the smaller angle there so in order to get the bearing the bearing the bearing of Obing from Sapon, it will be equal to to be equal to two hundred and seventy degrees minus the small angle that we found as the thirteen degrees. So two seventy two seventy minus minus 23 degrees rather so 270 minus 23 degrees will give us a value of 247 degrees so this is equal to 247 degrees 247 degrees which is possible answer c possible answer c yes this question actually looks a bit lengthy but i believe that you need to take your time and get information rightly done, sketch it and get your answers clearly. All right, so let's move on to the next question. And the next question says, the bearing of Q from P is 040 degrees and the bearing of R from P is 130 degrees. If the length of PQ is R, and the length of PR is 2R. Find the length of QR. So in the same way, we have to go ahead and sketch the information and put the right um, information down. So in a sketch form, to begin with, the bearing of Q from P. So we are standing at P, moving to Q in a particular direction which is 40 degrees so we draw we have to draw a cardinal point for p so that is the cardinal point for p so having the cardinal point for p then the direction to q is 40 degrees which will find itself sorry let me go for a line to draw that which will find itself that direction so we show our 40 degrees from the north pole so that is 40 degrees then we've headed towards Q so when you continue it says and the bearing of R from P we have Q here 
the bearing of R from P. So still at P, but we are heading towards R, 130 degrees. So still from the North Pole, 130 degrees will find itself in the fourth quadrant. So 130 degrees out of, um, 90 out of 130 degrees will actually give us an answer of 40 degrees. So it means that we have 40 degrees shown here. We have 40 degrees shown here. So we have 40 degrees shown here. Here is 40 degrees. Now, what is the remaining angle between the north and east pole? East post of um, the point P. We will have 50 degrees here. So we have 50 degrees here. Okay, so we've connected every information. So it means the total angle at the point P between Q and um, R is actually 90 degrees. So then we can join from Q to R with a straight line. We can join it with a straight line. So joining it with a straight line then it means we have a right angle triangle. Now they gave us some distances, which were the length of PQ is R. So we have R here, and the length of PR is 2R. So we have 2R here. Now we are asked to find the length of QR. Since it's a right angle triangle, then the best way of finding the length of QR is to use the idea of Pythagoras theorem because that connects the sides of a right angle triangle. And since the 90 degrees is facing the length QR, then it means the length QR becomes the hypotenuse. So QR squared must be equal to PQ squared, which is going to be R squared plus PR all squared. So that is also going to be. 2r all squared. When we simplify, we are going to end up getting r squared plus 4r squared and adding the 2, that will give us 5r squared. 5r squared. And we just want qr, the length of qr. So we find square root of both sides. So qr would then be equal to square root of 5 is the same as square root of 5. But when you find the square root of r squared, that will give you r. So in other words, um, qr is going to be, the length of qr will be r root of 5. r root of 5, which is possible answer d. Possible answer d. I believe you are following the lesson carefully. It's a revision on bearings so it's going to take a very long time to go through everything that we've done under bearing let's go to some other work examples so we're still on section a now other work examples include question number 31 which came in the year in 2012 so it says write the bearing of 151 degrees in the compass direction form Remember, we can write bearing in a three-point bearing form and then the compass bearing form. So in other words, there's a three-point bearing, which is always measured from the North Pole. And then in the compass bearing form, it means you are going to introduce the South and then the North and other cardinals coming on board. So a very simple sketch will make it easy for you to um, write the bearing in the compass direction form. So making a sketch of the bearing 151 degrees. Um, so we just have to draw a cardinal point. So if I have my cardinal point here, I have my north, I have my east, I have my south, and I have my west. So showing 151 degrees measured from the north pole in the clockwise direction, it falls within the fourth quadrant, which is between south 
and east so if i show the terminal line then it means the angle or the bearing 151 degrees measured from the north pole will be here so we have 151 degrees here but in order to write it in the compass direction form then it means we need to read it it finds itself between south and east so from the south pole what angle do we need to read before we get to the terminal line so it means we just need to subtract 151 degrees from 180 degrees so 180 degrees minus 151 degrees that gives us an answer of 29 degrees so we have the remaining angle using a red pen then we have the angle as 29 degrees here therefore the compass direction for or the compass bearing for 151 degrees will be south 29 degrees and east direction so this is the answer to the question so that is possible answer b possible answer b okay so let's take the next question or the last question in section a for that matter so we have the bearing of x from y is 120 degrees meaning we are standing at y so we draw a cardinal point then we show that is y and hence 120 degrees from the north pole of y will find itself in the fourth quadrant so 120 degrees will be here and that leads us to x so x may find itself here let us show our 120 degrees from the north pole so that is 120 degrees 120 degrees what then will be the remaining angle the remaining angle you take 120 90 from 120 degrees and that will give you the remaining angle and that is going to be 30 degrees so we have 30 degrees here let me use a different color for that region so we have 30 degrees here we'll come back for that then we've gotten to x when you move on it says and the bearing of z from x is also 120 degrees so we have to draw the cardinal point at x so that is my cardinal point at x and going to z we have the bearing of z from x is also 120 degrees so 120 degrees will also find itself within the fourth quadrant as well so making a sketch of that with a different color then it means it will be a straight line also heading towards that so we have actually gotten to z so we've gotten to z now when you move forward it says that find the bearing of y from z so we are finding the bearing of y from z so we are supposed to be at z we are supposed to be at z so being at z then we need to draw the cardinal point at z as well so let me use a blue marker for that demonstration so i have my north to south pole here and then east to west pole also shows so reading the bearing of y from z if you look at it carefully you realize that it's actually a straight line and hence i need to draw from the north pole to meet the terminal line that leads me to x and also leads me to y so in other words to get the bearing we need to transfer the angle 30 degrees here which is actually um alternating with the angle here so 30 degrees is also there now this 30 degrees will also be found here for the fact that now you have what we call 
vertically opposite angles between this angle here and the angle there. Now, then we can say 30 degrees can also equally alternate here. So we have 30 degrees there. So we have to add 30 degrees to 270 degrees. Then we will get our bearing. So the bearing, the bearing of y from z will be equal to 270 degrees plus 30 degrees, which is giving us a value of 300 degrees. That's giving us a bearing of 300 degrees. Thanks so much for joining this lesson. This is the first part of questions on bearing, and we've taken some objective type questions. Another video will be coming very soon for the subjective type of question. If you've not subscribed to my channel, kindly do that to support my channel and share, and then also click on the like button and then give comment where necessary. Thank you and have a nice day.